right, so last night the Celtics beat the 76ers in Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals to advance to the Conference Finals against Cleveland starting on Sunday. And of course I predicted that the whole time, so it's no big deal, right? Okay, so I said the Celtics were dead back when Kyrie Irving was announced to be out for the season. I said it was like the last, you know, nail in the coffin for the Celtics as far as doing anything in the playoffs. I thought maybe they'd make it interesting against the Bucks in the first round, but... I can't say I saw this coming, and that's even, you know, just with some of the favorable matchups for the Celtics, because, I mean, granted, they haven't had to play Cleveland or Toronto, any of the big boys in the East, but the 76ers were the number three seed, and they had a fully healthy team with really young talent and really good talent, like Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and, you know, just all kinds of talent that the Celtics could have matched if they had Kyrie Irving, but they don't. And they don't have Hayward. You, know, you already know all the players they don't have. It'd be easier to list the players they do have. But the Celtics somehow got it done, and got it done fairly convincingly. Now, I'll talk about that in a second, because um, Celtics have been finding a way to win these games. It hasn't always looked pretty. They, they beat the Bucks in a uh, seven-game series that you could argue shouldn't have even gone to seven games, but they... Celtics completely, you know, crapped on themselves on the road, but they were really good at home, so you got to give it to them. They, they got it done when it counted. And then in the second round, you know, beating the Sixers, and that was impressive because I remember even last year's team that made it to the Eastern Conference Finals struggled with uh, the Washington Wizards in the second round. That series went seven games. It seemed like the Wizards were even going to win that series just with the way they played at some of those games, but... Celtics pulled that one out by the skin of their teeth, and this year only needing five games to get it done against the Sixers... But even in that series, you could look at games like Game 2 where they were down by 20. You know, Game 3 was kind of a freaky game that could have gone either way, went over time. A lot of stuff had to happen in the last couple minutes for the Celtics to win. And then even last night with Game 5 being really close to the point where the Celtics, I think they were down by like 2 or 3 with like a minute to go, came back to win the game 114-112. to 112. So they beat the Sixers, and I, I know you can't really get into like how did they beat them or, you know, like a win's a win. But looking at Cleveland, you know, it's going to take more than just, you know, like barely scraping by. You know, they got LeBron James. They've got... They've got LeBron James. Um, they've they, they got they got somebody. they got Kevin Love. Um, obviously, no more Kyrie. But you still fear Cleveland. You know, they've made the finals every year. That LeBron's been there since he came back. LeBron's been in the finals for like eight years going back to Miami. And so... You don't know. I mean, I think the Celtics are going to lose, but I also thought the Celtics were going to lose in the first or second round. And the fact that they've made it here to me is already mission accomplished. I mean, I didn't see this season going much further than an Eastern Conference Finals matchup. I think everybody thought, you know, we'd be seeing this possibly, everything going well or not. With the Celtics going up against the Cavs, you know, I think that that was kind of the end game, and you see what you can do against them, but I don't think anyone expects the Celtics to beat them. I, I've seen some people say they could beat them. I think Scottie Pippen and Stephen A. Smith have mentioned that the Celtics could potentially give Cleveland a series, maybe even beat them, but I don't think they're going to beat them. I'm just being honest, and I know I said they were dead before, but, I mean, it is still Cleveland. They're still the, what, three-time defending Eastern Conference champion? And, you know, no one's really given them a series. Toronto, we keep thinking, is going to give them a series, and then they got blown out. The Pacers actually took them to seven games, which was a little surprising. And that's why a lot of people are saying the Celtics could beat the Cavs, because, you know, the Pacers gave them a series, and the Celtics are at least on par with the Pacers. Although that can be debated, because the Pacers had all their players, and the Celtics, you know, no offense to Horford, but he's probably their best player right now. And... Again, I don't know what it's going to be, but like I said, the Celtics have already fulfilled what they were supposed to fulfill. They got back to the Eastern Conference Finals, and at that point, you know, you're four wins away from the Finals. And I I didn't think I'd be saying that even a few years ago. So it really is a testament to Danny Ainge that he's gotten this team in position to win two years in a row. And, you know, I don't see any reason why that's going to stop with Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward coming back next year. Plus, whoever else they might add or not add. I mean, they got the young talent already, Terry Rozier stepping up big. We'll see if that goes into next season. But for now, Terry Rozier is one of your top players, without a doubt. And I don't know what this season's going to hold. The the rest of it, it could be a four-game sweep for Cleveland. I have no idea. But for what it's been, it's been a really fun ride. And, you know, I thought they could make the Eastern Conference Finals, and they did. And it's not in the way any of us thought. This season has not gone at all how anyone thought. You know, everyone thought they'd be, you know, top team in the East, give Cleveland a run for their money, and that might still happen, but not because of Gordon Hayward, not because of Kyrie Irving. And yes, it would have been nice to see Kyrie Irving versus LeBron in the uh, conference finals, you know, like the, the sidekick going up against the, the main guy, kind of with his own team, and 
all that stuff. Isaiah Thomas isn't even on Cleveland anymore, so that won't even be a storyline. So what will be a storyline is the Celtics trying to stop LeBron from making it to his ninth straight final. I don't think they will, but I hope they do, obviously. I'll be watching the games intently. I think the Celtics will make a series of it in terms of I don't think they're going to get blown out in any games. I think I said that last year, though, and they got blown up at like 40. But I think I think this, the Cavs will win it. I'll say six. I'll say the Cavs win it in six. I'll be a little bit generous toward the Celtics. I, I think that they might steal one in Cleveland and win one in Boston. But I, I don't think. I think the Cavs, you know, just with LeBron, and I know they don't really have like a third option behind LeBron and uh, Kevin Love, but you never know. Th th screwy things happen in the NBA playoffs. Somebody steps up that you're not expecting. and I mean, it could happen for the Celtics too, but I just I don't know if you know a bunch of really decent players that the Celtics have are good enough to overcome one fantastic player in LeBron and even whatever else Cleveland has. But we'll see. Again, I am very pleased with the Celtics and what has happened to this point. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts, other Celtics fans, on what you think of the season to this point. If you expect the Celtics to go any further, I personally don't, but I don't know. Uh, leave your comments below. We'll see you in the next one.